All right, everybody. My next guest is a very funny comedian who performs all over the country and is a warm up act for daytime talk shows such as Revolution and Bethany, while also subbing in for Rachel Ray, The View and Dr. Oz. His comedy special, The Whitest Guy in New York, is available at, dry bar, at drybarcomedy.com. And here he is, folks, the one and only Mike Burton. Mike, how you doing, man? Everything's good. Look at that. Are, are we both in our basements? I think so. Mine is a um, a fake basement, though. This is the set of, of Wayne's World. <laughs> I like. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah. This is yeah. Real. This is my, yeah. Yeah. This you is got my fat head in, in front of a fat head. Nice. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. So uh, you got the special out, the, the whitest um, guy in New York. Is that is that possible? I know a lot of white guys. How are you the, the whitest? It uh it's actually, it's, it's called, I can get whiter. Regular white guy. <laughs> Watch this, whiter. <laughs> I lived in, uh, in Washington Heights and so in that area, I always felt like I was the whitest guy in Washington Heights. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. I've been through Washington Heights. <laughs> Definitely the white guy stands out. <laughs> no, I think that's great because, you know, um, nowadays it feels like, um, somewhere along the way being white became being like uncool or unhip or like out of touch when did that happen man hey i ain't got nothing against you i just think y'all funny people just the way y'all walk cracked me the fuck up you know just be all tight and shit how's it going jim how's it going? Yeah. steve steve hey bob yeah yeah i think we are i i i mean it came with like as far as comedy goes i mean they've been we've been made fun of for years uh the black comedy, you can't dance, you're goofy, uh, corny, all of that. I mean, that's been going on since I, I mean, since I was a kid, since the 80s, 70s, 80s, we've all be, always been the, the goofy, nerdy white guy. Y'all, y'all can't dance. How do we break that? We got to break that because, because, uh, I think we're cool dudes. I think me and you are cool guys, man. <laughs> I think there's some out there. There's not a lot of us, but there's there's definitely yeah, there's, there's a few of us that are still cool hold, holding the torch, you know. Sure. Like, what's what's would you say is the coolest thing that you've done recently? Anytime you get to perform live, that's pretty cool. Right now, I mean, the bar is so low right now. You do a, a <laughs> live show for four people. You're like, man, that was pretty cool. I got out there live again. So it's. I don't know it uh that's it right now the coolest thing is is definitely being able to perform live even for smaller audiences because the, i mean it's limited everybody's limited no matter where you go whether it's pennsylvania jersey whatever in new york the clubs aren't even open yet yeah uh it would be really cool it's really cool to to do those live shows to uh be able to hang with the comics again yeah that's the there's no the camaraderie better. yeah yeah hanging out with the comics i miss that i miss going and doing spots in the city like at the comic strip and you're sitting there you're watching the game you're hanging out with the guys somebody comes up and taps you and goes hey man uh i just lit him so you're on in two and you're like no i'm having more fun here All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, i do i miss that a lot so it's it's definitely cool to to be able to see people uh rarely but you do get to hang a little bit yeah you do the camaraderie is is definitely missing i think that's a, a thing that a, a lot of uh, comics are feeling because like you said there is outlets still like you can do zoom you can get this outlets for your comedy so you can do zoom or or you can go to uh, you know i don't know if you're based out of new york but you could leave the state and go to connecticut or new jersey or, or wherever else is open um and and you know and perform for houses that are, you know, 25%. So it's a little bit weird, but at least you're getting out there. And like you said, you're getting that camaraderie. Yeah. I mean, I've been out to Long Island a couple of times 
And then and governors, I mean, brokerage governors, they were all set up for it. They did everything. And they're still, no, you can't do it, which just gives some common sense behind it. Just a little bit of common sense. That's all anybody's asking. It's very frustrating. It. Yeah, because a little, little bit of common sense. They had you behind plexiglass. They had the, the air purifiers, everything you could possibly want. And uh, and still they're like, nah, don't open it was it was it was crazy and and ridiculous and 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 you know it's and frustrating for the the owners the govs owners the comedians the staff the audience members they had a couple of like uh, little um comedy rallies to try and get you know change uh, cuomo's mind and all that stuff we do miss being here making everybody laugh and all you comics and everyone else that we uh in the community that do fundraisers benefits and all that stuff yeah, everybody's suffering over this year like you said we were equipped for it it was in the backyard we had a lot of successful shows were coming through there did you did were you there did you get a chance to perform at the backyard uh i didn't do that one i did uh i did brokerage but i went and hung out after it was amazing so many comics came around people that definitely weren't on either show but you right. had those comics plus other people and then you had the guys that I worked with at brokerage come up a couple of miles just to hang out, just to talk. And comics are great because you can say anything you want, of course, and nobody gets offended. You're like, yeah, you say the worst thing ever. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a liberating experience that everybody misses. And it's, it's also one of those things where everybody says they miss being like away from home when you travel all the time you miss being away from home but right now for the last year home too much like this right. is too much home. <laughs> like not even going out on a weekend you're used to going out on a weekend and if not like a week and and cruises weeks at a time yeah right and now, just every day it's like i like my house but not this much you gotta be <laughs> kidding me just hanging out yeah in the basement just you know waiting for this COVID to end and get out there now do you still travel now do you do you go out and perform at like uh Connecticut or other places or you just yeah, kind of not, not overnight I don't stay anywhere overnight I don't know that you trust places uh I, I tell, you, tell you the last time I spent the night somewhere it had to be last March April or not April but yeah last March last March March 5th, 14th was the last show I did before they shut everything down. Yeah, and then wow. I didn't do another show until June, late June, out in Jersey, and uh, and that was great. It was outside, and they thought they may get seventy five people, and one hundred and eighty people showed up, and they kind of spaced out or, or spread out and did what they could, but doing the show. Doing the show was great. Hanging with the comics was great. But I went up last. And so by the time I get up, it's dark. We started during the light. The lights are on. So bugs are all over the light. And I'm lit. So bugs are all over me. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we're not doing this a lot. This is not This you, is not good. If you think about it, though, like, let's just, if we fast forward 10 years, 15 years from now, when you're talking to upcoming comics or whatever, or younger guy, you're going to be like, I was there. I did this. Uh, I performed, you know, on rooftops and backyards and yeah. in drive-ins and we had to do what we had to do to keep comedy going. And, you know, c comedy was so important in those times, you know? Yeah. It's, and it, uh, those guys will never understand. It's like me talking to the guys that came up in the eighties how there were clubs everywhere right. and everybody made great money. And I'm still like, no, nah, I don't really believe it. Come on. Everybody made money. Yeah. Everybody made money. It's so. crazy. When you look at the eighties boom. Yeah, man. All those comedians and a lot of them are still around. They're still doing it. Yeah. I love those stories. They're, their stories are great. Their stories kill mine. Like, <laughs> like born to Poughkeepsie one time and it was bad. You know what? Like, these guys have, just the best stories ever about because there were clubs everywhere. Everybody was booked everywhere all the time from little rock to Miami to, and then like head back to Minnesota 
whatever those shows and clubs are, they all knew them. They all did them. Oh yeah. You stayed in that place. And I just sit back and listen to those old guys. And I love it. I think they're, they're phenomenal. They're great. It was like debauchery at its finest. It was like everything, like yeah. those kind of stories are there. Those you know, the people, the run-ins with people, all kinds of, of crazy stories, man. I, I um, was it Rich Scheider's uh, book? I killed. Yeah. That book has, if anybody wants to see, read some stories about some comedians, man, that one will get you. Um, Yeah. So that kind of stuff. And I could imagine for you, like you talk about camaraderie, talking with these guys and getting stories that aren't published in books. (laughs) It's probably, yeah. Probably cool. It seemed like back then they didn't care what you did. As long as you showed up for the show, you did the show. You could do whatever you want. There was no, <laughs> there were no other rules. Just be here for the show. You can wear what you wore last night. We don't care. Just show up, <laughs> do the show, do the show, and then do whatever you want to do. And that's, <laughs> I don't know that that's the case anymore. Yeah, it seems a little bit more, like you said, like uh, we evolved um, or devolved uh, from that in, into, you know, you know, a little safer, you know, yes. vibe nowadays. But um, when did you get into into stand up? How long have you been uh, at it now? You've been, I mean, for a while, well, right? Uh, 95, 96. Started yeah. doing the open mics, got past it. Uh, lucky enough to get past it at a couple of the clubs in the city. So, and then went full time in 2000. The coolest audition I've ever been on was a voiceover audition. And those are cool because you'll talk for maybe 30 seconds and they'll send you money. This was the easiest one ever because all I had to do was walk in and say, Ford Explorer, no boundaries. <laughs> That's it. That's all I had to do. Ford Explorer, no boundaries. So I do that. But the audition people are there. And they're like, well, we want you to play with it a little bit. Could you play with it? And they're like, really? All four words? <laughs> Like, no, you're a comic, you did improv with it. Can you improv with it? Oh, I sure can. Somebody sees you at a club and they're like, I think you can do colleges. You're like, all right, I'll do colleges. And uh, you have to do an hour. I don't have an hour, but that doesn't matter. You stand up there for an hour and do your thing. And all of a sudden you're you're making way more money than you were. But wow. uh, yeah, full time since 2000, which is which is nice. I mean, that's a... That's a huge luxury to have. And it hasn't always been great. You don't see things um, stop it. Like you, when you're doing colleges and you're booking all these colleges, you don't see that drying up. But all of a sudden, hey, I'm not doing it in colleges anymore. How am I going to make up that money? You're not for a while. You have to figure it out. Right, yeah. Uh, there's guys that are great at it, of course. And they're like, well, I'm doing movies now. Well, I'm not, you know? So <laughs> uh, you figure it out. But it's, I do, I love I do. I, I know that it's a luxury and it's and very lucky to be able to make a living doing this for for 20 years, 21 years. Like, if you don't know, if you ask a Latino, like, you go, where's the bathroom? They'll go, mm. they'll do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and do you speak Spanish? Do you hablo? You do. Did you think I said, can you throw your voice? <laughs> How did that happen? We got one Latino. Do you speak Spanish? Yeah! It's great. I've been lucky enough to work with some really great people that, uh, that helped me out along the way. Somebody takes you on the road, and all of a sudden you learn how to do the road. Well, yeah. you've never performed outside the city or the tri-state area. Let's go to Canada. Canada! So... <laughs> Did, did you have a mentor anybody in particular that kind of guided you through it i had some guys not not necessarily like that where i uh not anybody that i traveled with all the time like that but i had uh rod reyes was a comic that took me on the road two weeks to canada uh had never done anything like that performing must have been seven shows and then you have a couple of nights off and then you start another seven shows and come home, drove with him up there and back, uh, working with guys like Joey Cola. I hosted uh, Joey's Joey best Cola at the stress factory. Must've been, had to be 97, 98, uh, had no material. I, you know, I mean, when you look back, 
you're thinking, oh man, I'm getting laughs. And now you're like, not even close. But uh, <laughs> working with guys like Joey, who it's a learning, you're talking between the shows, so you're learning that, but watching him on stage, work a crowd and those bits. Where did they get the food from? Where did they get it? I don't understand. Where did his whole body, can you imagine being that happy? Even if the IRS made a mistake and gave me an extra five grand, I don't know if I could wag my whole body every time. Oh my God. He could have closed on any bit and everything built up and I had the applause break at the end. And then he went into another one with an applause break at the end. There was no real, what you know is filler now. Like, here's a filler joke. You're going to take a couple of minutes to get me to the end. Right. Um, it uh, it was great watching it. And that was definitely a learning experience. And then watching somebody else go up and go, hey, man, what are you doing? Like, there was no payoff. Right. You're gonna tell a story with no payoff. I mean, that is not the way it's done. Yeah, because you you look at somebody like like Joey, and like you said, how he he kind of orchestrates yeah. every joke. Like you said, it, it kind of has a build, and then a punch, and then a tag, and then. Cats don't give a shit. My cat is like, look, I threw a bow at it. A little box smells. I'm taking a nap. You're an asshole. <laughs> oh yeah, here's something for you. La 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 la. la. It is inspiring, you know. Every joke is a is a closer. You could close with anything, and I love that. Closers kind of work themselves out. Like all of a sudden, okay, this is the best one. Let's just close with this. Yeah, and yeah. Wrap everything up, and okay, this will be good. But to have those throughout is just it's amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah, Joey's a a, a comedy legend, Long Island superstar, and uh, he's amazing. He's awesome. Oh, I, when I I did stand up for a little while, I, I uh, from about 1998 through about 2000 ish, I, I was doing it here on Long Island, the, the brokerage, governors, all the circuit. I did I did open I bring a show at the Comedy Cellar, so I got to be on that stage once in my life. But um, but yeah, man, it, it's uh it's not easy, and but I'm glad I did it because I had the thrill of killing of like, you know, having a good show in my right. estimation at the time, like, you know, 10 people laughing, <laughs> but then I also know what it feels like to, to bomb and um, how demoralizing that could feel. And every comedian bombs, especially in the beginning. But I think that, that you separate the men from the boys when the ones that can, can persevere through that. And that's a mental game. And I, you know, and I was, I was not able to do it. What's, what do you think's the, what would you tell advice you have for a comedian like in those shoes where he's bombing a lot, but he, do you tell him, okay, it's time to just let that dream go. Or do you say salvage this kid and tr and push forward and try to do it? It's tough. Cause I mean, there's, there's different types of course of bomb. There's bond because your material is awful and nobody likes it. Right. <laughs> uh, there's the the bombs where everyone did well and you bombed, and then the next guy brought it back to a ten, and yeah. that's on you. That's your bomb. There's not where the audience is just bad and everybody has a rough set. Sometimes on those, there's one guy that can break them open, but you don't know who that's gonna be, which comics that's gonna be. So uh, there's different things. There's as, as a comic watching somebody bomb, especially a new comic, either they have it, like they have the material. You can see the materials there and they don't know how to perform it yet or the opposite. You know, they just, they're, they can perform, but the material's awful. If you do one more fart joke, I swear to God, dude, like whatever that is going to be. My wife's on her period. Oh, great. <laughs> this is going to be genius, everybody. Sit back. Um, <laughs> my but set you, you, can i tell you my set that it was this is again you got to remember it's 1998 90 well this is like 2000 ish uh, you, okay i won't i'm not going to go into this set like i'm not going to deliver it like i'm on stage i'll just tell you what it was right so and it worked i just want i want to know for, from you if the material if it was the material or for me or what so, so some nights it worked 
other nights it didn't work. And, and what, and, and a lot of times, one particular time, people actually started w- walking out. <laughs> All right. So it's, you got to remember the time period. So it's the like 2000, 99, 2000 ish. So remember that show Oz that they used to be on HBO and had a lot of frontal male nudity in it. So I'd be like, what's up with Oz, man? I've, you know, I've seen more cocks than I, than I saw at the farmhouse or something like that. And then I get into, uh, gay people love this this show it's become a huge hit in the gay community um they all want to be arrested now and go to jail and uh the, the crime rates going up and, and all this stuff but now as a result of this the gay community is loving this show they can't get enough of it and now the crime rate in the gay community is going through the roof because all the gay guys want to get to the big gay orgy in Oz. <laughs> <laughs> Just the other day, the gay guy got caught stealing. And he's like, that's right, officer. I did it. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> Call me Dorothy and send me to Oz. <laughs> The reason why they were walking out in, the le- in that other show was because there was a, a predominantly uh, gay audience that night, and I didn't know about it. I also followed a juggler that night too, but <laughs> so I had a few things going against me. But uh, yeah, that was pretty much the material. Uh, and uh, and and then I forget what else I had, but that was the that was my main stuff. That was like my big my big closers. Because then yeah, then I did like this whole thing about Dorothy Gay and of Oz. I can't imagine that audience not liking. It. <laughs> see i just wish i had people up to, like there was a, a lot of camaraderie even amongst the us open micers at that time and some of them are still friends to this day but we didn't really critique each other's work i, I wish they did yeah it's it's hard because it's a personal thing that's a tough thing to for somebody to uh especially from somebody on your level or which where is some new guy who's telling somebody two years in you know it'd be better if you did this Nobody wants to hear that. It's a very personal thing. You have to be able to take it, but, uh, and comics aren't necessarily the best with uh, being tactful. Right, right. <laughs> Most comics, man, that sucked. Did you hear them not laugh? That was a lot of not laughing going on. Ooh, you know, it's, it's just part of the deal. Well, that's what happened. And some of the, the comedians that night were mad at me because the audience was walking out, you know, and there was still right. a lot of comics left. So um, that was one of the, the, the last ones I did. I, did. I think I did two more shows after that. And then slowly and I could never get my confidence back up because I used to be like, you know, swag city up there. And then after that bomb and they let, walked out. I mean, oh, my God, it was demoralizing. Yeah. <laughs> I had a bomb so bad. I took a friend with me and he was, he was one of those guys before I ever got on that uh, he was one of those re- the guys who was the reason that I got into stand up. We talk about it all the time. We would watch it back in the eighties, the, that half hour comedy hour, all those things, Carlin specials, uh, Eddie Murphy specials, of yeah. course. So I, he moves up to New York. He's hanging out with me. We're going to the different clubs and stuff. But I said, let's go to an open mic so you can see what it's like. I said, I'll go up. You don't have to go up. You can go up next time. But I I tell every new comic who's never gone up, go up and watch first, see how it's run, see what your material would be. Is it as good as what you're seeing? And there's going to be some good and some really not good. Right. And uh, so he watched me and I bombed hard. And I was trying all new stuff to where even like the host of the show heckled me, said something to me that, <laughs> threw me off even more I'm like what are you doing Damn. and uh so my my friend saw me bomb so hard he never ever got up <laughs> this whole plan was we were going to run the world together we we're going to run around the country and I'm, he's like nah yeah if, I, if you do that there's no way Cause it's, well and right so he's like no man if that can happen to you then i'm definitely not going so i, I ruined somebody else's career before it even started <laughs> Uh, yeah you know you know people inspire in different ways no but but you managed to to move through it and um and here you are now seasoned veteran in the game you know um is it harder now do you think to to get into stand-up um with the temperature of the world 
with the you know the, the SJWs out there and the PC culture and cancel culture. Do you think c- comedians could be as edgy, especially coming out of the gate when they're not famous yet? That's hard. It's hard right now, but you have all the avenues that we didn't have, and I still don't use, which is YouTube and all of that for comics to get famous before they've ever hit a stage. Yeah, and crazy. so they show up and they still can't do the job. I'd still much rather watch somebody who had to go through the ranks, open mics, hell gigs, bar gigs, shit shows, and find and put a set together that's going to work anywhere. And then you become what you become. Uh, guys like Norton and Attell, when you see the young guys who come out and immediately want to do that, they don't know how to do it yet. And it took those guys a long time to learn exactly how to do it uh, and to get the laughs and not just turn an audience off. You have to, there's a way to do it. And these guys found it and they're great at it. Uh, Geraldo could be filthy, but he was great. I never saw anybody walk out going, fuck that guy. Like that, I, it could have, I'm sure it did, yeah. but uh, he had great bomb stories. That's one of those guys that I miss, but it's, yeah. uh, Everybody, like you said, everybody's bomb. Everybody has bomb stories. You're only as good as your last show. So you bomb, you better get up again. I did well one time. I was just telling this story. This is fun. I uh, did really, I used to do danger fields and I did it for a few years and it was awful. Like I, nobody enjoyed going to danger with Jim Norton of all people before I ever got past there. And he goes, right. danger fields is where jokes go to die. And he was exactly <laughs> right. And it was brutal. <laughs> so I did this show there, just a regular spot on a Wednesday, Tuesday, whatever it was. And uh, I walked out one of the very few times going, man, that was great. Like that was, that was like doing comedy in a comedy club. And that never happened there. So I leave and a friend of mine was running an open mic near my apartment up in Washington Heights. Hey, can you come up and, and do a couple of minutes? I'm like, sure. And so I get up there. She goes, okay, you're going to close it out. And I watched a friend of mine that I know, and I know he's a great comic, and he was eating it. He was eating it hard. And I turned <laughs> to her and said, I'm not going on. And she said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not going up there. I said, I just I had a rare, good set at Dangerfield, and I don't want to wash that off immediately. I'm going to let that <laughs> sit for a minute or two. I'm not going up there to have it just eaten away. I'm not doing that. Because you're really not going to go on? I said, I promise you won't see me up there tonight. <laughs> so he closed it out with a bomb, but nobody else was going to do better. There's no way I'm going to bring it back. It was just a bad crowd. Like I know that guy and how good he is and the energy he put. He was giving it everything and he was getting nothing. And I was like, fuck those people. There's no way I'm going up there. You were smart because it would have ruined your night. We took away the glow the, that you were basking in. Yeah. Why, why go through that? Why do that to yourself? That's a ballsy move too, you know, because it's it's you're there. You gotta say no to, to the to the Booker's face. Hey, I'm not doing it. Nope. But I, I commend you for that. That's a lesson. That I hope some of these younger people are watching right now. You don't have to always you take- don't have to say no. It's a hard thing when you start out. It's a hard thing when you've been in it for a while. That first time you say no, you're like, man, I just said no to something. I'm not <laughs> gonna drive 800 miles for 50 bucks. That's right, I said no. But there's plenty of guys who do it. I. Everybody did it when you start out. Yeah, when you start out, you want to get all the FaceTime you can. You'll, you know, you work for free or, or gas money or whatever. I mean, yeah. I did have that one paid gig in my in my short stand up career. I had one paid gig at a bar in in um, Queens, and uh, it was a couple comics there, all same kind of open micers, and and uh, the people were pissed off that we had turned the TVs off. It was just, the, the, you know, all that and. You just go up there, you perform, no one's paying attention but the other comedians. And yeah, that was fun. But it got paid like 20 bucks. <laughs> I guess I had my gas money. <laughs> yeah. So then I was like, hey, I'm. Pro- <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Hey, Donald Silk. Yeah. Donald Silk. We are keeping this show rolling right along. Well, Mike, thanks again, buddy, for taking the time. Tell everybody where they could um, find you and follow you and all that good stuff. Uh, just go to MikePBurton.com. You have to throw the middle initial in there because there's a there's an L.A. Mike Burton. 
But uh, the New York Mike Burton is MikePBurton.com. MikePBurton.com. Thanks again, Mike. I, I truly appreciate it and uh, love to have you back on, man. You know, Absolutely. anytime. That'd be great. All right. Thanks again. Mike Burton, everybody. So we're all going two miles an hour so you don't die, okay? And you drive, and then on the side of the road, they had a big flashing yellow sign. Caution, caution, really? Thank you. Uh. All right. So I keep going, and then there's a big flashing yellow sign up further. Caution, beware of squalls. Squalls. What's a squall? I'm in the middle of nowhere. I could die at any minute. But now I gotta be on the lookout for some lost Indian woman with an Amber Alert? <laughs>